The Dandelion and the Hidden God. They seem a strange title for a cut-down version of a sermon on prayer, taken from two verses from Jesus' teaching on prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. But bear with me, and perhaps you'll see why. For this cut-down version, I'm only going to say a very little bit about the biblical context of these two verses. They come from Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, and they're from the Sermon on the Mount, and they're from the section where Jesus is teaching on prayer. And I'll remind you that that section includes Matthew's version of the Lord's Prayer. That's the context of these two verses. Unusually, I am just preaching on actually one phrase from these two verses. And in terms of the background of prayer, all I'll say in this cut-down version is that just about anyone who has ever prayed has both the experience of seeing prayer answered and believing God to be at work in his world as a response to prayer, but also the experience of seeing prayer seem unanswered and God seeming absent or hidden in this world. Those experiences, both of them, form the background to this cut-down sermon. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. There's one kind of prayer. The prayer done so that people will see us praying. And we all know about that kind of prayer, sadly. We spot it easily in others, and sometimes uncomfortably in ourselves. But then Jesus goes on in the next verse. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. There is a really strange phrase, your Father who is in secret. It, it, it seems out of place in the Bible and especially out of place on the lips of Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, speaks of your Father who is in secret. Of course, we don't like the idea of a God who is in secret. What we want is, like Moses, to see the walls of water on either side as we walk through, or, like Elijah, to see the lightning bolt come down when we pray. We love the dramatic stories of powerful miracles that we keep telling to children in Sunday school over and over again. But Jesus was Jewish. And it's Jewish Jesus who says, your father who is in secret. The Jewish people had other experiences aside from those of Moses and Elijah. They had the exile in Babylon. They had the Greek Empire following, and then, by Jesus' time, the Romans with their brutal empire. And then, since then, and through into the 19th and 20th centuries, pogroms and holocaust. Jewish people know about the Father who is in secret, the hidden God, the God who seems absent. And once we begin to look for it, to notice it, the Bible is also full of stories, not just of the God who performs dramatic miracles, but also the God who is in secret. Think of the story of Joseph. It's a fairly dramatic story with plenty of big action. From brothers selling their brother into slavery through the seducing woman who uh, cries rape, imprisonment, saving Egypt. There's about all the drama. Joseph sums up his story in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. Now, although the teller of Joseph's story has time and again nudged us with remarks like, for God was with Joseph, or for the Lord was with Joseph, despite those nudges, there has been 
very, very little, if any, direct intervention by God visible on the surface of Joseph's story. In Joseph's story, God is in secret, hidden. Unlike in the story of Moses or the story of Elijah, and that, it seems to me, is what we want when we pray. When we pray, we want the thunderbolt. We want, like Elijah, to see God act dramatically and fulfil our desires, requests, orders. How strange that is, that we, frail, feeble, and always failing creatures, somehow feel that we can tell God what to do, and that somehow we know better than the Creator what is good for us and for his world. It's weird, isn't it? God, the one and only God, is maker of all, knows everything, understands his world perfectly. And yet we have the gall to think we know better than God what is needed. And when God doesn't reply to our prayers the way we want, we complain. And we say that God is hidden, invisible, inactive, absent. Sometimes God's answers to prayers are a bit like this dandelion poking up through the crack in the concrete. Small things, almost invisible things, but signs of something more. That's the God we find in the story of Joseph. That's the God we find in Ruth just happening on Boaz's field. That's the God who is in secret, like the dandelion growing in secret and breaking through the crack in the concrete. On one occasion, we're told in Luke chapter 17, that Jesus healed ten lepers. And of course, you know the story. Nine of them don't bother to say thank you. But one comes back to say thank you. It seems to me that we're a bit like those nine lepers. Not that we fail to say thank you when God acts, but that we, nine out of ten of us expect God to act the way we want the way we tell God to. We give our orders to the master of the universe and expect them to be obeyed. Perhaps, rather than that, our prayers should be not wishing God sent thunderbolts, but us looking around and listing and rejoicing in the dandelions. God bless. <laughs>